Moin Moin, hey, I show you my um, reference mix template uh, that I created over time and um, with this reference mix template I check my mixes, my rough mixes against um, perfect mixes from um, mastering studios so I get a clue um, what I have to do so I can change my mixes already on on a um, let's say global size, global EQ um, by boosting or attenuating um, different frequencies and compare to the um, other mixes and I use this template as well to learn from the great uh, mixes I like or the, the mixes, the sound I like. So let's get started. So let's dive right in. Okay, what you here see is my um, reference analyzer mixing template. And uh, let me explain it. It's really simple, but um, it has some logic in it. So, so you should know what I've done here. So what you see at first is I created some audio tracks here where I can load in my tracks or other tracks. And um, they are all with minus 10 dBFS and one is active, the others are muted. So if I um, pull several tracks in here, everything is already muted and I have to mute and unmute them um, by one. So, but in general, this track is a little bit um, bigger because I want to see the waveform when I um, pull it inside. But first, let me go through all the things I configured here. So what you see here is I have an EQ+. Plus. I have my Auratone tool 2, where I can check some settings. And I have two Voxango spans here. And uh, as analyzer and uh, yeah, a spectrum analyzer. So they are differently configured. I will show you this in a minute. So, and I configured on the project tab a lot of remote controls. So if I open that here right now in the control editor, you see I configured all the volumes for all six tracks. Then I configured that I can switch on and off the EQ. And this is my um, two bus volume control. So for all um, tracks that are in the, um, in the group. Then I have match and mute is um, for four tracks, I can switch the, uh, the mute button and can adjust the volume fader a little bit. So I can kind of compare and kind uh, level match uh, two tracks. So I can compare, for example, my own track with a track I really like. Um, and I uh, want to copy the, the sound, the, the ambience and everything. Then there is an exact copy of my Auratone tool here. Not an exact uh, copy because Auratone tool has some more things here I didn't put in in the project tab because I don't think you need that so often while doing all this. It's just like mostly you would you would use the Auratone, the mono um, switch, and maybe the mid-side um, switch where you uh, cut out the, the low frequencies from the side. And the rest, I don't know if you, if you want to use that. Then there are EQ settings. And these are one-to-one, uh, -one, the EQ settings from the EQ+. Plus. So this is the shift here. Then you have the output gain, the value, uh, the, the volume matching of the output. Then you have here the range that you can select and you have the adapt EQ. Here you can choose between the different bands and when you choose a band, you can put the, this on solo. And you can switch the EQ on and off. You have, I think, two or three switches to switch on and off on different pages. Then the EQ um, plus the first two EQs you can set. 
can use this to put a low cut like this or a low cut like this, move the frequency around, the gain, the Q factor, and this repeats for EQ1 or uh, the, the first um, EQ point, the second, a third, and a fourth. I didn't put eight in it because if you need four uh, adjustings in your EQ, I think you then should go back to your track and uh, correct that or fix this problem or this, let me say, um, the sound um, that you don't want or that you want. And then come back here and check it again and then do some other adjustments. So step by step, not uh, 20 things at the same time. So this is EQ1 and 2, EQ3 and 4. Then you can switch on and off the different EQ points if you need to. And then you have the span control and the span control is only to switch on and off the span. And if you switch it off, the whole um, display just freezes. So you can just freeze it. If you switch it on again, the span is then resetted. So this is also on reset button. And then you, you have different meterings for DBFS and um, some other K14, K12, um, LUFS, momentary loudness, uh, short-term loudness, loudness, and so on and so forth. So this is fairly standard setting. And now let's come to um, a track. Just put it in here. This is a track. This is just a mix, a rough mix. Nothing um, really special. And you already see, and that's the reason why I made this so big. You see there's a lot of clipping going on. Don't know if this is a good thing or not, but it could be or it could not be. I don't know. So. Now I go on the metering and now I switch on my webcam and the webcam shows my controller. And with this controller, I can control the whole thing without mostly using the mouse. And now I switch on the spans and I will just pull down the volume a little bit and start that. And on the spans, you see on the left side, let me show that to you. You see on the left side, um, on the one hand, the average here. Uh, this is the average. And this is the moving average. And the second one in the back is the maximum. And this is the moving maximum. So like um, peaks in RMS, but really slow so you can see um, over the whole time span, you listen to that song or um, the whole song, for example, what the song looks like, what the emphasis on which region of the frequency there are. Okay. And on the right side, you see another span that is a little bit quicker. Let me show it like here. And here you see the real-time average and the real-time max. So real-time average is in the front and the real-time max is in the back. As well, something like um, peak and body, RMS and peak mode. And both are set to, no, that's not right. This is set to zero nearly, and here you can put that on zero as well. <laughs> My mouse is gone. <laughs> it just... So you can put that on zero, and then you have both on the same height. But you can also put them a little bit closer so that you have a better zoom in on, on this. Um, spectrum. And another nice thing of the Voxengo span is that you can press down the control button and press down the mouse button and then you get the um, a bell curve that you can adjust with the mouse wheel. And you can listen to specific areas 
emphasize them or make them a little bit quieter and listen what's happening here. Which instrument is playing where and what? For example. And another nice feature is um, you see all these numbers over here. You can go with your mouse somewhere and look, okay, what is this um, frequency about in Hertz? Then you see the note with sense and some delta. And if you like to, you can just do a right click and copy the frequency to the clipboard and paste it in your EQ or send it to a friend or whatever you want to do. Post it on social media, <laughs> your frequencies. <laughs> okay, so what I can do now is um, I can use my controller here and control all this on my screen without using my mouse most of the times. So, <clears throat> as I said, not using the mouse. I can just go to the Voxango Spans, then switch it off and on again, <laughs> and then they are resetted. And then I go back to my um, control screen and start the track again. A little bit louder so you can hear it better. Like this. And currently I don't, currently, oops, currently I don't have a, Reference track. So I'm just looking right now what I can do. So in this track, I know, for example, I have, I could use the, the aura tone, for example, switch it on with mono, without mono, just mono, nothing. Okay, I will go to the, um, Equalizer settings and switch that back to 10. The range. I leave uh, Adapt EQ off and go to my frequencies. Now, first I select a low pass. Maybe it's something like this, I don't know, maybe like this. And then I go back here. I need some low frequencies. Let me go here. Maybe like that. Then I take the second. This is here, this one, and I use uh, a bell. And want to emphasize a little bit the low frequencies and give a little bit gain to it. <laughs> a little bit. Maybe, oops, not like this. Maybe like this. take the next one, the third, and I want to use a bell. It's about normally like 300. And I go down. Maybe I have to increase the range again. Um, this one. Go back to the second.
then you can check always we need some Maybe a little bit too much. For sure you can check then as well the aura tone again for example aura tone like a kitchen radio or mono or mono and aura tone Okay, and here you can just reset both hooks angles. This is freezing, now they are reset. It. Okay, so this this is the whole um, template. And this is not just for uh, adjusting your mix or looking where your mix is going and what you need to do. It's really just, if you have a, a, some reference tracks, you can um, put it in here and just watch the frequencies. So you see on the left side on the uh, Voxango span, the, the slow movement, the slow development of a track and um, you see the overall performance of the max and the average so what the track looks like if you want to see them and and where it where it moves this is really um, interesting and um, you see the general emphasis on what this track has and on the right side you see all the little movements but not too many and not too fast so you can follow a little um, a little bit um, what is happening here and this is a really great overview for me um, to learn about how tracks are made and um, why they have such a really amazing sound I, I like so much and I want to copy or maybe not copy but maybe um, learn how parts of the sound is made for example I like uh, um, like a very beautiful low end and, and, and stuff. Okay, that's it from my side. I hope you liked it. And the template itself you get on my um, blog on Klangwerk and the link uh, you'll find in the video description. I hope you like it. Um, please leave some comments and I would love to hear from you. So see you then. Ciao, ciao.